You, you might think, and we might think that what we need is to know exactly how every detail turns out, but that's not what you need. What you need is a vision of Jesus. You might want to know what's going to happen with your finances and how it's going to happen. You might want to know what's going to happen with that wayward child and exactly how the details are going to work out. You might want to figure it all out in your mind so then you don't have to worry about it. But really, you just don't want to have faith about it. Because as a matter of fact, God's not going to show you all those details. But what I am going to do is I'm going to show you Jesus. He's saying to John and to the first century churches that are so heavily persecuted. And he's saying to us in the midst of our tribulations and our persecution and to any Christian should the Lord tarry in the future who might face grave persecution. He's saying, I'm not giving you all the specifics about how the victory is going to be accomplished. That's not really what the book's about. I just want you to know that it is accomplished and I want you to see something much greater. I want you to see Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith and that means when you see him, you get faith. It's like God is saying to John, I, I, I have other times and places through servants like the Apostle Paul giving very logical arguments and I've shown things to my servants that explain things to the people, but right now I'm not going to explain something. I'm going to show you something. I want to put a glorious vision on display and I'm going to take you into a trance and I'm going to let you see it. I want you to see Jesus, John. I wish I could describe him to you because they're not human words adequate. I'm going to just let you have a vision. He is the one who is and was and is to come. I'm trying to say that he's beyond time and through time and ahead of time and on time. He didn't have a beginning and he doesn't have an ending. I can't put it into words. I think the Lord's saying, so I'm going to show you the picture that he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the ending of the alphabet and everything in between. So everything that's written is through him. And you don't have to worry, therefore, about what you went through yesterday because he's still in your past ready to heal old trauma. And you don't have to worry about what you're facing today because he's right now here in this moment, each moment. And you don't have to worry about the future because he's already in your future. He's already got manna planned to rain down in your wilderness and he's got a ram in the thicket to go to the altar for you. It's already a plan for the Red Sea to part. Your miracle's in the making, John. I wish I could put it all into words for you, but I don't think I could explain it to you, the Lord's saying. So let me just give you a vision. Let me give you a picture. He's like a son of man. He's a son of man because he is fully human while remaining fully God. He's a man, so he knows what you're going through, but he's God, so he can handle what you're going through. And he's got a, look at this, John. Can you see it? He's got a long robe on with a golden sash. Oh, I see it. It's like a priest in the Hebrew temple, ones that kept the lampstand lit, the old wicks trimmed, refilled them with oil so they keep burning bright keep shining their light, the priest who makes the sacrifice on behalf of the people of God. I want you to see your great high priest who's not unable to sympathize with your weaknesses, but has gone into the Holy of Holies on your behalf, wearing that long robe and that sash, and once for all has sprinkled his own blood there in the Holy of Holies upon the mercy seat wherein all sin has been paid for. I wish you could understand it all, but let me just give you a picture right now, a picture of Jesus. Look at him. Look, look, look. Look, John, do you see it? His hair is white as wool because he is the ancient of days in Daniel's prophecy, the picture of that which is old and respected and timeless. He's timeless wisdom. He's experienced it all. He knows it all. He's been there and done that. He isn't duped by the whims and the wiles of the enemy. He's too old and wise for that. You can't trick him. You can't fake him. And you can't disrespect him. He is the ancient of days. Oh, I wish I could just describe it to you, but just look at the picture of it, John. Just look at this image, see it, watch it play before your eyes. Look at his, look at his eyes. They're like flames of fire. His gaze is penetrated, penetrating. He's got, he's got fire in his eyes. He's got Superman eyes. He sees right through things. He's got x-ray vision. He sees into it. He sees around it. He sees through it. And to those who love him and look into his eyes, the fire that comes will warm every part of their inmost being and torch up the darkness so that there is no deception that is left. And if you hate him and you want to walk away from him, he's got a look that could stop you dead in your tracks. He's got fire in his eyes, I tell you. His feet, look at them. They're burnished with bronze. Bronze is refined in a furnace. Burn until all the impurity is gone. He's precious metal refined in fire. Everything he stands on has been refined in the fire of his own suffering. He doesn't act with purity. He is purity. He doesn't act holy. He is holy. I wish I could describe it all to you, John, but just look at the picture. Just look at this video. Listen, listen, listen to his voice. 
I wish I could tell you how far it could be heard, how thunderous it is. So instead, I'm just going to let you listen. Stop and listen. And you hear the thunder of Niagara Falls, the voice of many waters. You can't talk about anything when he speaks. It's too thunderous. The cascades of his voice of truth are drowning out deception. You can't shout over top him and you can't whisper in the darkness behind him. Nobody will even hear what you're saying. You can't silence him. You can't tell him what he ought to say or how he ought to say it. His voice is thunder. And if he says, peace be still, the storm will stop. If he says, Lazarus come forth, the dead will rise. If he says, come into the joy of the marriage feast of the lamb, you will come. And I wish I could describe to you the nature of the word that proceeds from his mouth. I'd like to be able to tell you more, John, about how powerful the word of God is. I I can't describe it to you. You don't have a mind that can understand it. So watch this video. Look, look at his mouth. What do you see? It is like a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. It is so sharp it can penetrate anything. It is all sharpness so that it can even come and separate spirit and soul and bone and marrow. There's nothing that is sharper than this. And please note this. It is strong and it is gleaming and it is not a defensive weapon. It is not there merely to deflect the darts of the enemy. But this is the sword of the spirit of the word of God which goes forth and wherever he speaks, what comes out of his mouth does slay the enemy. Whatever comes forth forth out of his mouth will dismantle strongholds. Whatever comes out of his mouth is a sword that will defeat every enemy that seeks to prosper against you. The word of God cannot fail. The word of God will not fall to the ground. The word of God is not some little cute, little fluffy something to cheer you up. It's a sword. Look at it. And look at his face. Look at his face. It's shining like the sun. It's too bright to look at. John, have you ever had someone smile at you, lift up their countenance upon you, and you felt warmed all over because of the acceptance? Look at the face of Jesus, my love, and see his countenance. He smiles upon you. This book is a blessing because it is a revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's the gospel.